Hello, everyone. You're listening to the latest Flyers Talk podcast. I am Jordan Hall, and as always, I am joined by the wonderful Brooke Deshra. Brooke, the Flyers suffer a 3-2 overtime loss to the Hurricanes. I'm sure they will take that point and be happy to grab that point yeah. in this stretch. Yeah. And they did it without Sean Couturier. Another game without the Flyers captain. He was a healthy scratch for a second straight game. Brooke, how confused and surprised were you that he was not back in the lineup? Do you feel like it made a big difference too? I was shocked about the initial scratching. And I was like, okay, like it's just going to be a one-time thing. The fire was lit under the team. They got the big win against Toronto. That was great. I kind of thought everything was going to reset. That didn't happen. I, I I was shocked that he sat again. Um, if I'm being completely honest, I don't think two bench two benchings are warranted at this point in the season, especially from your longest tenured veteran who has the cap who is the captain of the team right now. I think it is kind of crazy. Um and I I would sit here and say that I don't expect him to sit at all this weekend, but I also didn't expect him to sit against Carolina. So I have no idea. Um <laughs> it's just one of those things where you're just like what what is happening why is it happening again i'm not one to question john tortorella's methods but oh my gosh if you don't see katore in the lineup on saturday against boston i don't know how people are going to respond to that one <laughs> Yeah, two games here at the Wells Fargo Center. I'm pretty sure people are going to want to see Sean Couturier in the lineup. And they come off a loss. Mm-hmm. It's probably a good reason to maybe change things up a little bit. Obviously, it wasn't a terrible loss or anything. But it just baffles my mind because I think Sean Couturier is one of the 12 best fours they have. Oh, and I, without a doubt. I'm, this is not to try to talk badly about these two guys. But like Nicholas Delore plays three three something minutes last night. Ole Lexell, I think, played in the five, six minute range. I had to triple check that, yeah. but like Katori is going to give you more minutes there. Like, what it just so it's like, did, did you really want to keep Katori out of the lineup to play those two guys, not yeah. even over eight combined minutes? It doesn't make a whole lot of yeah. sense to me, but I definitely think the time is now to get him back in the lineup. He, he at least will give you 10 to 11 to 12 minutes. Play the captain, play Sean Katori. I, I just think it's time. And maybe the storyline can kind of be put in the past. Yeah. I mean, you, you look at um, they beat Winnipeg on the road earlier in the season without Sean Couturier, but that was mm-hmm. for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, so the argument can be, well, they do know how to win without Sean Couturier, but why would you want to if you have him, if he's healthy and he's good <laughs> to go? Now, I also kind of sit on this fine line of, I do think that maybe there should have been maintenance days throughout the season. I think that you go from not playing 22 months of professional hockey to being thrown in. And you know, Couturier is is a player and a person who does everything at 120%. So doing that after not playing for almost two full years, you're going to kind of hit a wall. And I think that that's really where we're at right now, where you know, maybe if he had sat out a game or two throughout the season, it would have, I don't know. It's, it's a really interesting thing, but I was more on board with kind of maintenance games throughout the year rather than just sitting him because he's not giving you exactly what you need. But I'm in full, I fully agree with you with, he's one of the 12 best forwards on the team. He should be playing every single night at this point, but who, <laughs> I don't know. It's a weird, it's a really weird situation. No, it really is. It's very fair to question the Flyers' usage of him before his role diminished. Before his role diminished in his first 50 games, he played over 19 and a half minutes per game. Like he was playing like the Couturier of old before the two back surgeries. And this Mm -hmm. is after going almost 22 months without game action. So could they have maybe like pulled the rope a little bit and held him back and then maybe make him fresher for the stretch drive. And yeah. did he hit a wall? I think it's possible to, it's possible to think maybe he did. And now he's kind of trying to get 
find his way again. He said it multiple times. He's trying to find himself a little bit here in these shorter minutes. But I think Katori will get back in for this huge weekend. You need him, Brooke. I mean, yeah. yeah. And I understand like the whole the whole level of holding players accountable from top to bottom. I do. I, I know that we we heavily questioned why Frost set out sat out substantially at the beginning of the season, why Bobby Brink was sent down to Lehigh Valley when the process is getting them to figure things out along the way. I understand that uh, Tyson Forrester, why we were always confused, why he would just be consistent in the lineup, even through his sh- slumps. And you're realizing now that all of that playing time, like Forrester is a very dependable, reliable forward right now. Mm -hmm. And that happened because he played consistently throughout the year. So even though you're a veteran in this league and on the team, I think losing yourself, I think that you have the right to be able to find your way again. And the only way to do that is by playing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, I, I understand the accountability factor of from top to bottom, how long you have been in the league versus, you know, if this is your first season here, but Yeah, it's, it's real. I don't know. It's the whole thing is so interesting to me. Um, I'm just glad I don't have to make the decisions. And I say this, I think every week. So, (laughs) Celebrity cook Steve Martirano brings his Italian American cooking back home to Philly. Enjoy Martirano's prime at Rose Casino and Steve's famous meatballs with Sunday gravy, prime steaks, and more. Make reservations for Martirano's prime on open table. Well, Brooke, what was your biggest takeaway from this 3-2 overtime loss? Uh, I think the Flyers really are happy to grab a point there. I know it's a cliche in in hockey of they got the point, but that very much was a game where I think they would be happy to leave with the point. They rally in the third period to tie the game. They force overtime. They suffer a loss in a tough way, overtime fashion. Seth Jarvis scores the winner. Yeah. But what was your biggest takeaway from that game? My biggest thing for this entire stretch of games is that you just need to stay afloat. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying go out there and win every single game down the stretch. That's an impossible thing to ask for. But you win a game against Toronto, a team that you heavily struggled against. You finally you snag a point against Carolina. um, And then I'm again, like I'm more concerned if you don't get a single point Thursday night and you're going into this really difficult back-to-back of Boston and Florida Saturday, Sunday, who the Flyers have played well against Florida this season. They're 2-0 and down in against the Panthers, but they haven't won against Boston since 2021. Yeah. So it's been a while. Um, and I think Florida is going to come out with a little bit of vengeance. I think they're going to want to kind of quiet the flyers on sunday and you kind of know how this team has notoriously been of recent years against the bruins so you don't snag that one point against carolina and then this stretch for the most part is doom and gloom and very scary Hmm. so it was it was necessary obviously two points are better than one in any situation but they're they rightfully earned that one point the efforts (laughs) <laughs> for the game tie and goal were insane. So yeah, they rightfully earned that point. And I think it's justified. Um yeah, no, and, I, yeah. Yeah, in the third period, they outplayed Carolina. I thought that was a real positive sign. The game gets later and their game gets better against a team that's playing at home, a team that's red hot, one of the hottest teams in the league. And the Flyers were able to kind of take it to them in the third period. I thought that was a real promising sign. And for me, I really was impressed that they got effective minutes from three defensemen outside of Travis Sanheim and Cam York. I thought Adam Yinning, I thought Ronnie Adder, and I thought Eric Johnson were really good for them. And they need that. They can't, as much as they are going to ride Cam York and Travis Sanheim, and they did. York played just under 30 minutes. Sandheim played 26 and a half, mm-hmm. but they're going to need to get effective minutes from the likes of Yinning, Adderd, and Johnson. And I thought they were all very good. Zamul's playing, I think, pretty well. He's he's seen his minutes go up. He's playing on the power play. I think the Flyers are trusting him a little bit more because they, quite frankly, have to. Sure. But the fact that they were able to get real positive minutes 
throughout their defensive group, I thought was huge uh, because we know how thin they are at that position. We don't know when Drysdale versus the line and or sealer are going to be back in the lineup. So right. the Flyers need those guys to step up. And I think it's, it's nice to see some young guys playing in this stretch. I mean, here's Adam Yinning, who's hasn't even played five games yet in the NHL and he's playing in a playoff push and Ronnie Adder is a guy I think the Flyers really want to figure out who he is and try mm -hmm. to you know is he a part of the future is he maybe between the AHL and the Flyers who is he yeah. I think they're getting a good read on him and it's in big against, games and they're getting yeah big games yeah. against some of the top teams and names in the league you know mm -hmm. it's not easing you into it it's literally throwing them into the fire and seeing what they can do and they've they've stayed afloat mm -hmm. so I think that that's that's obviously incredibly beneficial for the Flyers, but it's it's great to just kind of have that for conversation once we move into the offseason is who they can see possibly staying around for the next couple of years. Or mm -hmm. are they pieces that could move in the offseason? Who knows? They could become valuable trade assets. So it's really an interesting um situation that the flyers are in but it's a good one yeah so and they have yeah. and then speaking of goal prevention they have a big decision in net this weekend brooke yeah back to back samuel larson i think has been very good over his last two starts and they needed to see that in his previous three starts he was pulled twice as john tortorella said the other night he thinks harrison got his swagger back a little bit i thought i've seen that too 100 percent. it was how, on full yeah, display how do you think he's played and how do you think they split things up this weekend? Yeah, I've never, again, I am not one that ever really had concern with Erson. Mm -hmm. um, when he's good, he's really good. And then you have some clunkers here and there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when he's bad, he's really bad. Mm -hmm. But it's not something that kind of stays on his mind. Like you can tell that he kind of wipes the slate every single game and every time he has to step up. And that's exactly what you need with a young goaltender is to be able to not get into his head about, you know, he's had impossible things thrown at him this entire season. So for him to consistently contribute to the team's success, the way that he has is great. The biggest question is I personally would not play him in both games. I don't yeah. think that that's, you know, very feasible, but do you play him against Boston, a team that they have struggled against? Or do you play him against Florida when they've, they've played well? Like, do you almost go for you throw all your eggs in one basket this weekend and say, we need at least two points out of these two games? Do we kind of push for, I, I don't know, every game is important, obviously, but do you say we go Airson on Sunday, give him a little couple days rest, have Sandstrom go Saturday against Boston? I don't know. It's again, that, so many, I don't knows right now. Yeah. No, that, that broke. I'm, I'm leaning that way too. I think it's a one o'clock game on Saturday, which is a little different. It's a little earlier than what it obviously a night game would be. Mm -hmm. So I'm with you. I, give Harrison a little more rest, uh, get him in on more of a regular schedule where he's, he's so used to preparing and planning throughout a day and then starting at night. Um, and unfortunately I think Sandstrom will have to go during the day game against big bad Boston, but he has not played in a little bit. Obviously, Erickson has played more. So that's how I would split it up too. And yeah, yeah Brooke, I'm so with you. Erickson's going to have – he's going to have his bumps. Like he, he's a 24-year-old rookie. I'm okay with that. I'm more looking to see how he responds every time. And 100%. the fact is he really hasn't let a poor start kind of bleed into the next, and that's a real promising sign for a rookie. Sometimes, you know, a rookie might let starts go into the next. Right. And he really hasn't. Uh, he's – He's built, I think, now on consecutive starts, and he's kind of stopped the bleeding here when mm -hmm. he's had a bad one. Uh, I think that's a real good sign here for the Flyers. Yeah, Brooke, this weekend I think is going to be huge. Yeah. <laughs> I think if, if they can just split it, right, if they can split it, I think that would be good. And the teams behind them, Brooke, have lost. Yeah. I mean, Capitals and Islanders are not playing their best hockey, so I think they're getting some help, and they just need to really – um I think we've said it, stay afloat. Yeah, and you know what's really interesting? Because obviously we're just looking at the weekend, but then the following game after Rangers. the Panthers is the Rangers. So first in the Metropolitan. Hmm. But I think that that Rangers game will be a battle. I'm not as concerned because the Flyers see this team 
so frequently, I think they they understand how to compete against the Rangers at this point. And I think it was very evident with the last matchup a couple weeks ago. Um, so, yeah, I'm like, you you steal two points at some point this weekend. If you split it, if you get three points, fantastic. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with two. And then you steal a point or a win against the Rangers. And I think that is a successful gauntlet stretch for the Flyers. And then it's it's not smooth, smooth sailing for the rest of the year, but it's definitely much easier. And I think they have a chance to really get fans back in the building here. Um, we've seen really nice crowds at the Wells Fargo Center. I think a lot of fans are excited about this team and the rebuild and where mm-hmm. it's gone and how surprising they've been this year. But if you uh, if the Flyers can maybe surprise some people over this weekend and take a game, maybe take both. <laughs> I think people really will start to get on board because here, here it is. Here's the stretch drive and they're getting that back closer to the playoffs. And I think fans would be like, wow, they're, they've beaten some top, yeah. top teams here. I mean, um, they have all season though. Yeah. They beat Winnipeg. They beat Vancouver twice. Um, they beat Florida. Mm-hmm. It's that they've won against top teams pretty much consistently throughout the whole year. I think the one win that would draw a lot of people back is a Boston, Boston win. Yeah, I really do. Um, you know, since it is a Saturday afternoon game, you're going to get a decent crowd of Boston fans there too. Um, last home game against Boston did not go to plan. Um, it was what seven, six or seven goals Boston yeah, I think, let in. I want to say um, six three. Not fun. And I think that that is a win that fans would definitely be like, okay. This is another demon conquered because I said the same thing mm-hmm. about the win against the Leafs on Tuesday. Yeah, It was a win that they needed as a morale booster because it's just something that has always weighed on them in recent years. I think Boston's the same way. If you can kind of toss that off and say, hey, we beat Boston. They are not a team. I mean, obviously, they're a team to be feared with. They have the best <laughs> record in the league, yeah. but... I think that's something that the fans would be very much so on board with um, if yeah, they win. Yeah, so. Bru- Bruins and Rangers are two teams, right, that have kind of just had their number. I mean, Flyers at, at times have not been even competitive against those teams. So I think fans would love to see them get a win against one of those two teams yeah. and perfectly put conquer that demon a little bit down the stretch. And they have. They've played very well against top teams. I mean, I think they have 11 wins over top 10 teams. So they've done it. And I think that's why uh, in-house, I think they really believe that they can be anyone. They've yeah. said it, and I think they genuinely mm-hmm. believe it uh, when they're playing their game. And I'm sure Sean Couturier would help that, Brooke. I agree, he Jordan. He might help I that agree. cause when he's in the lineup. <laughs> and maybe we'll see it. Maybe we'll see it this weekend. <laughs> please, please, don't make this a longer storyline than it yes. has to be. <laughs> Less drama. Ugh. Less drama. Who knows? But we'll see where that drama goes this weekend, Brooke. But great to see you. Great to chat with you. Thank you so much. Always great to see you and talk about the Flyers as this season winds down. What, uh, Brooke, I think there's 12 more games left, right? They're at the 70 game mark. Yeah. 12 more games left in this regular season. Hard to believe. Uh, A big thank you to Ben Berry, our podcast producer and guru. And of course, Flyers fans, as always, thank you so much for listening to the latest Flyers Talk podcast. Wherever you get your podcast, please rate and listen. And we cannot wait to talk to you next time. 